But what Monica said today, you know, I know God cares about those big details in our lives. I know that he walked us through cancer. Um, but he cares about the little details too. He cares about every small thing. And sometimes those little details stack up and we feel overwhelmed. And when that happens, he still has everything under control. And that's what we want to focus on. So we're going to sing Still in Control. And as we do, just worship with us and let this song minister to you. It's, it's a powerful song. And we just want to worship him for everything he does for us. Yes.
I want to lift my voice to you. I want to praise you. I thank you, Jesus Christ, for who you are. I thank you for being the one who has forgiven me of my sins. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the one who has relieved me from condemnation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for freeing me from a life of bondage to sin. Thank you for freeing me, Lord Jesus, to be all I can in you. Thank you for filling me, Lord Jesus, with your joy, with your hope, with your assurance, with your confidence. We bless your holy name today, Jesus Christ, for who you are. You, Lord Jesus, are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we acknowledge that today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Do you love the Lord today? Amen. 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 God bless every one of you. It is so good to see you at New Life Fellowship. You may be seated. And we want to extend a special welcome to each one of you, those who have joined us for our second service, the, uh, the 1030. So we're going to call you the 1030ers. And uh, I don't know if that is correct in English or not, but that don't matter. Um, if this is your first time to be at New Life Fellowship, in front of you is a communication card. If you just take that and fill that out, we would appreciate that so very much. Also, there is a uh, QR code in front of you, and if you want to just take a picture of that, that will take you to our church website where that you can uh, fill out some information and uh, give us some uh, helpful information about who you are, and we appreciate that so much. Also, on your way out today, if you are a guest, we have a New Life Fellowship water bottle that we would like to give you as a way of just saying thanks for coming and being a part. Well, New Membership Sunday is coming up on October the 3rd, and we want to give each one of you an invitation to be a part of our membership class. If you have not already become a member of New Life Fellowship, it's going to be meeting in Pastor Dane's office over to my left, and uh, that will be October the 3rd, immediately following the, the second service. Also today, when, uh, when you came in, you may have seen uh, one of these daily devotional journals. Uh, we have them on the little black high-top tables uh, at, at each uh, entrance or exit to the doors. Uh, in, at, in, on your way out. Anyway, <laughs> grab one of these, and uh, this is going to be very helpful. Pastor Dane's going to say a little bit more about this in his message today, but we just want to help you in your faith journey, and this journal is uh, definitely going to uh, give you some great words to read each morning uh, as you look at it. Also, we are in need of some volunteers in, uh, in our preschool, in our nursery, and uh, with our greeters, and let, let me just see, do you know of somebody, not yourself, that would serve well in that position? Like, you can raise your hand. You're, you're, there you go. That's why I just grab it now. Point to your wife. Then point to your husband. That'll work out good. Great. We've got over 12 volunteers. And <laughs> I'm going to be contacting you this week. And uh, if you could help us out in any of these ministries, we would uh, so appreciate that. And just say thank you. It takes a lot of volunteers to make a church service uh, happen. It doesn't just happen, and we understand this so much, and we appreciate every one of our volunteers. So if you can help us out, uh, we just say thank you in advance uh, for helping us out in this area. Also, we'd just like to let you know we have black boxes at the back of the auditorium, one of them in the lobby, and if you would like to uh, give, uh, we have those black boxes for you to give your tithe, your offering, and your missions pledges, and we just say thank you so much for giving and being faithful to the Lord with your finances. Before Pastor Dane comes to preach, would you just please stand? And we would like for all of our 10, 30 years to do something for just a second. That is, uh, you can greet somebody that you haven't shaken hands with and uh, just say hi to them. And while they are saying hi to everyone, let's also welcome all of those watching tonight. Thank you for watching
excuse me, man. Son of David. 
When he entered into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said to him, listen, listen to the question. Do you believe that I am able to do this? He was asking about their faith. Do you believe I'm able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it done to you. So, lack of faith, no miracles. Have faith, miracles. If you desire to see miracles from God, receive from him, live a life of fullness, you need to have a vibrant, growing faith. And that's what we're hoping to talk about in our series. Listen, many people say, talk about, man, the devil's attacking my marriage, or the devil's attacking my work, the devil's attacking my finances. Actually, what he's getting at is, his, is your faith. He's attacking your faith, making you doubt that God can do it. Making you doubt that God is, God's going to be able to do something in your life. You're going to say, oh, it's always going to be this way. I'll never be healed, or I'll never have freedom, or I'll always be addicted to this. And the devil is attacking your faith. He doesn't want you to have vibrant faith, because vibrant faith moves mountains. Vibrant faith does miracles in your life. So he attacks that. He knows that when your faith is weak, you're weak. He knows that if your faith is shell, you will be shell. So we need vibrant faith. So this past August, the church board got together and we've been praying about our church and, and the direction of our church and where God is leading us. And one of the things that is really heavy upon our church and, and upon the minds of our board is our, our mortgage. Do you know that this, this December, be seven years since we've been in this building. And um, how many were here during the movie days? And a few of you. A few of you. Survivors. Survivors of that. You, we should keep the shirts. I survived when I when the church was met in a movie theater. You know, we got set up and tear down and all that. So when we when we built this built this building, uh, we raised quite a bit of money for this, uh, but we also had to borrow money. We borrowed around 700000 something like that. And so we, we've had this mortgage payment. And, you know, mortgage payments are not fun. Amen. <laughs> you know? But you have it. But we believe it's God's will that we be debt-free. I believe that. I believe that it's God's will for our church to be debt-free. And, and on, on top of that, we also want to build a, a children's wing just rest of you, right off, you know, if you go outside and you know all that grass kind of goes down the hill, we, we have plans, we have blue, uh, blueprints ready for a children's meet over there, and, and some classroom space. And so, and that's going to cost who go fuck. <laughs> you know? And so we, we said, okay, Lord, what, where are you leading us to? And two years ago, there was this miracle that took place, and I, I, I see it as a miracle, because no, I, I talk to pastors all the time, you know, say, man, we love to expand, we love to build, we love to do that work, just kind of landlocked, you know. Two years ago, the land that's just south of us came available for sale. That's unheard of, to have land just right next to your property. And the guy coming to you, he didn't put it on the market, he comes to you and goes, want to buy my land? <laughs> well, I'm not I'm trying to hold on. And it was like two and a half acres. You know, that's, that's a big chunk. Two and a half acres. And he says, how about $150,000? And if, you, if you're in the market of land right now, two and a half acres for $150,000 is like a steal, right? Yeah. I said, well, you know, let me pray about it. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> you know? So we, we brought it to the, the, you guys, you know, the members of the church. That's why membership is so important to get to this in this. And so the membership, uh, with, even before we voted, $75,000 came in. So even before we said yes, $75,000 came in to, to, from generous givers. And so we took the other $75,000 and added it to our church loan. And so that, that's, where the, that's where we get to send, if you got a card, that's where we get that $75,000 and the board says, hey, let's do this. We have, we have some money in savings. Let's take half of the 75,000, 37,500. I do my math, right? 
and we'll make it a matching gift. So for every dollar that is given, we'll match it up to $37,500 so we can raise $75,000. And so what we're asking you to do is pray. Lord, what would you have me to give to pay down this debt? Now, man, I, I'm believing, man, we could go beyond the $75,000. Let's, let's hit the whole six seventy five. dollars Let's, there might be fasting and prayer, 21 day fasting and prayer. The Lord laid on my heart, and you can read my journal, I'll give it to you. Sorry. I'll have to, what did I call it? Redact some things. You know, especially your name as I was praying. Um, you know, I was saying, Lord, provide $1.2 million. I don't know why I came up, why I came up with that, but $1.2 million. So we can pay off our debt and give our, our children. Yeah, come talk to me after church. <laughs> but taking steps of faith. Taking steps of faith. So over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about Hebrews 11. Taking steps of faith. You know, everybody, every one of us needs to take a step of faith in our life. Not just, you know, this is one area. But personally, taking steps of faith. So... We're going to read in Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. This is the, the introduction. Would you stand with me for the reading of God's Word? It says this, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your Word. May your word come alive to us today. Would you speak into our lives today? Challenge us, encourage us, bless us. And be, above all, Lord God, we just want to bless you. For our desire today is to glorify the name of Jesus above every name. And so through the word, through the singing, through everything that we've done today, may you be honored, may you be glorified in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So I talk about... Faith is essential for salvation. Faith is essential for miracles to happen in your life. So we, my desire, and I hope it's your desire, let's go deeper. Let's find out what this is all about. Let's find out what faith is all about. So I have a couple questions we're going to go through based on these verses. Number one, if you're taking notes, what is faith? What is faith? If we're needed, if we have it, we've got more of it. So what is it? The best definition of faith is found in verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I want you to see what that first part is. Faith is. It's not faith was. Faith is. It's acting. It's ongoing. It's moving. It's going forward. Faith is present. Faith is moving forward. It isn't in the past. Faith is. And it's faith is assurance. Some say faith is Confidence, assurance, confidence, or faith. I have confidence in something. I have assurance in something. I asked Caleb uh, to, to set this chair up here. Uh, Caleb is a, a young adult, 19 years old, I think. Are you 18, 19? 18. He's single. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Sings, plays guitar. All right. <laughs> he brought this chair up. Now, Got this chair. I can look at it and go, well, it's got some fabric, but I don't know much about the fabric. I don't know what kind of fabric this is or anything about it. I don't know who made the chair. I don't know if there was some kind of reinforcement to make sure the legs were good enough to, to bear weight. I, I, didn't, I didn't look to take off the tag that says if you remove this tag, it's going to be my dad. I, I don't know anything about that. But I have confidence, if I sit in the chair, it will hold me up. I have confidence, right? And if I sit like this, I'm burning, you know? And so, no one's got that reference. <laughs> Probably seven months old, that's why. So, confidence in the chair. I have the Word of God. And in the Word of God, it tells me about God. It tells me about his character, it tells me about who he is, what he does, how much he loves me, how much he cares for me. It tells me that I have a plan for salvation. It even tells me how to get to that salvation. It tells me that he has a place for me in, after I die. 
in his kingdom? I know more about God than I do about this chair. Confidence in God, assurance in God. To put my faith, to step out in faith, to trust in Him. Confidence are the things hope for, what are you hoping for? There are the desires that God's put on your heart. Whatever you've been praying for. Show me your, your prayer life. Show me your life. What are you praying for? What your interests are? Say, are these interests, is what I'm praying for, line up with the will of God? Do these bring glory to God? What am I hoping for? Faith, assurance that God is going to move. Faith is conviction, number two, B. Number two, B. Or not to be. Uh, now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The King James Version says it is the evidence of things not seen. How do you have evidence or, uh, of things not seen or conviction of things not seen? Now, conviction is different than preference. Now, let me give you an example. There, there's people who prefer to have a preference of a certain car they want to buy or a certain truck they want to buy. Oh, I only go out and I don't want to buy a Toyota or I want to buy a Chevy or I want to buy a Ford. And, then, and so you have a preference. If you're going out to, to purchase a car, you have a preference of what you want to buy. You, you kind of lean towards those things. And it, it hits another level to guys with trucks, right? They have a preference of what kind of truck they want. Well, I only drive, you know, a Ford, right? Drive a, 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 a Chevy a Duramax or a, a Dodge Cummings or whatever. You know, you have this preference. That's then it takes it to another level where it's conviction of the truck you drive. Yeah. It's not preference anymore. It's conviction. You know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Chevy Duramax is the best truck out there. Woo! And there's no one, no one, who's going to convince you otherwise. You own that. It's a conviction within your heart. You have a bumper sticker on your on your truck that says Ford stands for Found on Road Dead. You, that's your conviction. You are convinced that that is the best, truck, right? It's a, it's another level than preference. I know. I am convinced God loves me. I am convinced what God says in his word is true. I am convinced that God is my healer. I am convinced that God is my provider. I am convinced that God is my restorer. I am convinced that he's going to move in my life. Also because he sent his son to die on the cross to cover my sin, to redeem me from my sins, to pull me out of the miry clay, to pull me out of the pit, put me on a rock and put a new song in my life. He did that. I am convinced he's the only way. Amen. There's a conviction. And out of that conviction of what God has done in my life and what I see him do in his word, I have faith. I have assurance. I have faith. So as we're going through this, this uh, paying down the debt thing, it goes beyond saying, yeah, I'll give a few bucks to that each week. That's not assurance. That's not conviction. That's tipping. It's saying, God, I don't know where the money's going to come from. But you're challenging me to step out in faith. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm going to trust you. I am convinced you're going to provide. And you step out from whatever it may be. And it may not be even a the pledge thing, and maybe just giving, starting with giving. I know you're going to provide. I know you're going to do it. So I'm going to step out of faith. God moves. I'm telling you, He moves. He does things like, what? In the ways you don't even think. Some of you think, well, I'm going to give, and all of a sudden there's going to be a you know, $10,000 check coming to me. Maybe. But sometimes it's just like, you save money at the grocery store. You know? Sometimes it's the things you don't even realize of how God moves. He provides. It. Give us this day but our daily bread. Oh, that's awesome. And you step out in faith. I gotta move on. Next question is why is faith important? First, faith is important because it pleases God. 
Hebrews 50 verses down, verse 6, it says, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and he's a warder rewards those who seek him. So you cannot, uh, you cannot please God without faith. You say, why is that? Because faith begins with coming to God. I believe God exists. And so I'm going to come to him because I believe he exists. And guess what? He is pleased with that. Yeah. He's happy with that. I have four kids. And I, I love to provide for them. And I love that they have jobs right now that they can provide for themselves. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> amen back there, Adrian? Paige, amen? I get a big amen, Connor? No amens. Amen. <laughs> So, if you hate it, if you're watching online, I know you're saying amen. You're my favorite. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what if, what if, you know, you have your kids and you just provide for them, you meet their needs, you know, oh, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to help you with this, and you, and you, you know, you're just trying to help out your kids. And they just receive it like, all right, thanks, and, you know, they move on their life, but they have no desire to be with you. With them. No desire to hang out with you. No desire to be around you. They only come to you if you if they want something. That would suck. <laughs> now that'd be terrible. And oh my gosh, this is such a jerk. That'd be terrible. <laughs> and so, but if they come and they just want to be with me, say, hey dad, let's go fishing. Let's hang out. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. You know, I, last week, Ethan calls me and goes, hey, Dad, let's go to the, what's that, track car racing? Yeah. Track car racing. And I said, no. Can you believe that? I was like, I was tired. I was like, no. I'm sorry. I should have gone. <laughs> but, you know, just hang out. And if they say, hey, Dad, let's, let's hang out together. Let's go fishing. Guess what? That pleases me because they want to be with me. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to reward them. Go fishing, I'll buy you lunch. Let's go fishing, I'll buy you breakfast or whatever. Because I want to be with it. Please, me. I think God's the same way. You want to be with me? I'm going to reward you. You want to be with me? I'm going to reward you. That's what he says in verse 2. For by people, the ones that we're going to learn about in Hebrews chapter 11, by them, received their commendation. Because they, they had this favor of God upon them because they took steps of faith. God's favor was on them. I want God's favor on me. And if I take steps of faith, that pleases him. That pleases him. And his favor will come upon me. Second, faith brings understanding. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So it says, by faith we have understanding. Understanding of what? I think it's understanding of how great and awesome God is. Because when you, when you take steps of faith, you see God move. You take steps of faith, you see God provide. You take steps of faith, and he does something amazing. Trust God more. Oh, it's so cool. But it takes us taking steps of faith and believing Him. And, he, and the, they talk about the universe. That this verse, understand the universe was created by the Word of God. I mean, outside we look the earth, the, the, the heavens, the flowers, the plants, the stars, the sun, the moon, the universe. Um, was made not with things that are visible. Now, if you're a carpenter or, or handy, you can look at a tree and say, oh, yeah, I can make a canoe out of that tree. I can make a chair out of that tree. I would say, I can make firewood <laughs> out of that tree. There's a quote that's attributed to Michelangelo. You may don't know if he actually said this, but Michelangelo carved David out of stone, the statue of David out of stone. And the quote says that he just removed any part of the stone that wasn't David. He saw David in the stone. So 
so that you see something and say, I can make something out of it. But God, nothing, nothing was there. And God spoke, boom, it was there. God spoke and it happened. We read it in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And we'll keep reading on. God said, let there be water. Boom. God said, let there be land. Boom. God said, let there be vegetation. Bam. God said, let there be plants, trees. Boom, 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 boom. God said, let there be stars. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Moon, stars, seasons. Fish, seas, mankind. Amen. Boom. God spoke in the That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, Out of nothing, he speaks in the heavens. I don't get it. I don't fully understand it. I don't, I don't understand every little detail of how the body works or how everything comes together. But God does. He made it. I, I read the other day, they get our galaxy, the Milky Way, has approximately 100 billion stars. And I was thinking, who counted? <laughs> they got the intern. <laughs> yeah. Spend the, your job today, and I want to talk within the next hour if we count all these stars. 100 billion. There are more than 10 billion galaxies that we're aware of. 10 billion. There's 100 billion stars in our galaxy. I don't know how many stars, if you just say it, okay, 100 billion. That's 1 billion trillion stars. And God just spoke and it happened. I don't get it, but I do know this. If he did that, man, that makes him pretty powerful. That makes him pretty awesome. And so I guess my need right now, I think God can meet that. If he spoke and the universe happened, if I ask him, maybe he can speak and this can happen. If I ask according to his will and I have faith, God can speak and I can be healed. God can speak and I can be delivered. God can speak and this addiction be gone. God can speak and my marriage can be restored. God can do Miracles can happen. There's nothing that God can't do. Nothing. My God is powerful. And when I look up in the stars in the heavens, and I look around the creation, it points to a creator. It points to a mighty God. I said, I, I know $675,000. That's overwhelming to me. My mortgage is overwhelming. God can do it. God can do it. It's like, that's nothing. But it takes us. He, he chooses to use us. Says, I, I'll do it, but I'm going to use you to do it. And you need to take a step of faith. He's challenging us to take a step of faith. So faith is confidence of things I hope for, conviction of things I do. Have yet to see faith pleases God, faith brings an understanding of how awesome God really is. And so the third question is this: Why well, how do I get it? How do I get more faith? Right? That's the that's the overwhelming thing. Well, I know I got so many needs, but how does it make it grow? To really have the confidence and assurance to take the seat, to understand who God is. So great question. Three three answers. Number one, ask God. Ask God. A few weeks ago, we did a sermon, and the sermon was about this the boy who was demon possessed, and he brings the father brings this boy to G, uh, mm -hmm. the disciples, and the disciples can't cast out the demon, so he brings him to Jesus, and this is the story. This is what happened. Mark chapter nine, verse twenty-one through twenty-four, and Jesus asked the father, "How long has this been happening to him?" And he said, "From childhood." And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, isn't that kind of our prayer? If you can do anything, God, 
And he says, have compassion on us, help us. And Jesus said, <laughs> if I can, if I can, I am the I am. If I can do anything. And then he says, all things, all, all things, all things are possible for one who believes. You may be thinking, but Dave, I've been dealing with this for, for years. You don't understand. I just read what God's word says. All things are possible. All things are possible for those who what? Believe. Believe. And immediately the father and the child cried out, I believe that help my unbelief. And I think that's where we're, a lot of us are. And I, I do. I see, I, you talk about all this universe stuff, I get it. But boy, I really doubt. Lord, help my unbelief. And if he says, faith pleases God, right? We talk about it, faith pleases God. And say, God, help my faith. Don't you think, if faith pleases God, you can ask God for greater faith. You think that's a prayer he's going to answer? I think it's going to please him that you ask for that prayer, for that thing, for more faith. So ask God. B. Read the word. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God, the word of Christ. If you want your faith to grow, read the word of God. Read God's word. Spend time in the word of God. I, I'm old school. I get the Bible. I know there's, I got the Bible on that. I get that. That's fine. But I, I'm old school. I, I like having the Bible in my hand and I, I meditate. I marinate in the Word of God. I don't rush through it. That's just me. That's my personal preference. I read one, maybe two chapters at a time. But I bring my pen and I underline uh, things that speak out to me. I write little notes on the side if it speaks out to me, and I put the date when it does so I can go back and remember, see what God does. I would encourage you when you read the God, read the Word of God, do that. Just slowly get through it. Just like, ah, you know. I understand there's plans. Read the Word of God 365 days. Read it all 365 days. Yay, you get a reward. I mean, let the reward come into you. Just, just sit in it. Marinated. And he was like, you may not know, don't really even know where to start. Start in the Gospels. Start there. Read about Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just read those. And just say, okay, God, what are, what are you saying to me? And as you read about the miracles of Jesus, man, your faith is going to grow. Faith, the faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Christ. And faith begins to grow within you. You're like, oh, man, if he did it then, he can do it now. My God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe that he can this in my life, and so I'm going to take a step of faith. Read the word of God daily in your life. Remember, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me, abides in me, remains in me, I can work through him. How do you abide? Reading the word of God. Spending time in God's word. That's why I've got those devotions. But don't rely on just the devotion. Why read the devotional? That's good. That's like a scripture. And somebody spots on it. Read the word of God yourself. Don't supplement the, the devotional with the Word of God. Read the Word of God, it's most important. And then finally, take steps. Throughout chapter 11, we will see men and women who took steps of faith, who did not know what was going to happen, but they took steps of faith. I can believe that this chair will hold me up. I can have confidence and assurance that this chair will hold me. But it means nothing if I don't sit in it. You have to take steps of faith. God's calling all of us to take steps of faith. It may be with this building program, it may not. Whatever it is with you, take steps of faith. So, well, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not praying about it. What is God asking you to do? And don't think right now and say, like, you know, if Dave says, take steps of faith in this, then I'll do it. That's my please. The Holy Spirit speaking to you. Whatever it is in your life that God's going to do, maybe giving, it may be going across the street and talking to your neighbor about Jesus. It may be uh, starting.
college group that may be stepping out of your comfort zone and joining a life group. Take a step of faith and see what God does. And it rewards you. And what happens as you take a step of faith, your faith grows and you're able to take a bigger step. Your faith grows and you're able to take, 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 give you a test. I don't care. I think I'm going to be a reader once a month. God begins to speak in your life, like, man, I live for you. Come, let's, let's do preschool because we need help in preschool. Oh, by the way, you need a drummer. There's a drummer in this building. Take a step of faith. You need a drummer. But you're serving in preschool and you begin, man, I really like these kids. This is fun. So maybe I'll, I'll take a step of faith and maybe I'll on a mission trip that helps kids in working in an orphanage overseas, and I'll give up a, a week of my life to do that. And then God begins to stir in your heart a little bit more, and you say, Maybe God's called me to full time missions. Maybe He's wanting me to go and serve in another part of the world, reach children. And it all started with volunteering for preschool. Now, a lot of you are. No, I've never volunteered. <laughs> I want to be a mission. I'm just giving you an example here. Taking steps, your faith grows. God, who's that passion you're in? You take another step. Financially, it seems like, let me just give a little bit. And God provides for me. Man, I more. You can't outgive God. I'm just saying. You can't. I challenge you. Try it. But you can't outgive God. God provides, keeps providing, keeps providing. And you grow, faith grows. I talked in the beginning of what faith does. It's essential for salvation. Essential for salvation. And I want to give us an opportunity here this morning to receive Christ into your life. It's by grace you have been saved through faith. The Holy Spirit may be plugging at your heart today. And you've been resisting it. You've been pushing it away. Take a step of faith and say yes to for you that you would take that step and see what God does in your life. Would you stand with me right now? Would you just bow your heads in prayer? And we'll just pray this song. We'll pray and lead you in a prayer. Your Father, for those who do not know you, and I know the Holy Spirit tugs on our hearts and surrender our lives. So Lord, we may right now say yes to Say yes to Jesus. Forgive us of our sins, for we are all sinners. Forgive us of our sins and make us right again. Come and live within me. Restore me, redeem me, make me a new person in you. I receive you today by the faith that you have given me into my life. And Lord, I pray for all of us. Bless you. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah.